Good afternoon, Brian with Grand Riffing. I got a trailer here in the background, my trailer we're working on. It's only about a month and a half old, but had a little bit of a hydraulic line issue. So we're gonna go through and go th some basic repair, safety, 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 at least with something like this. So if you got a similar issue, maybe this video will give you some insight on how to be safe when doing it. It's really not a hard repair. Literally all we did was switched out one hydraulic line, but with the weight you're working with, it can squish you like a watermelon really quick. So watch this through, It'll be a five minute video maybe, show you the problem it had and the fix for it, as well as safety precautions because it's very dangerous. All right, switch camera around, show you what's going on. All right, it is a GT714, so I can't, Gert, I don't remember. Anyway, here, let me show you the actual trailer itself. I only had a month and a half to help move equipment, trailer, uh, trash mainly, shingles, things like that. But I noticed it had a couple of spots developing in my driveway here. Before the wife got mad, I cleaned that one with soap and water. Caught it pretty quick. This is just for me today overnight working on it here. Um, anyway, so the hydraulic line. Let's get into the safety first. Safety, safety, safety. Trailers, first off. Any trailer you're working on, don't work under here. Hand is one thing, but don't reach in and working on it. Their, most trailer manufacturers will have a beam <coughs> like this here. Right over there, that black rectangle scored shape pivots right here folds up and it goes under a brace here that is your safety support make sure that's in there don't let it rest down all the way and then you'll notice i have a two by four here and i'll explain why here in a second you want to make sure those are up and no weight in here dump your trailers before it's got plenty of weight just in the metal involved so empty them first this is pretty much empty the hydraulic line coming down right over here it had a pinhole and it was just oozing out of it and i had used this quite a few times in the first month no issues but right about here on the old line is where it was dripping out. Talked to them up at TC Trailers. Again, great folks to work with. He's like, hey, send us a Vintag. We can get this worked in, but it might be some time. I didn't have time to wait. I needed this to be able to move trailers and trash, or uh, shingles and trash. Okay, I'll be there in just a minute. <clears throat> so I'm like, hey, can I just get a replacement cable? They're like, sure. Send us the Vintag so they can file the warranty claim. And I was passing through. They gave me the cable. It was a little longer, so tip on that. Try to keep your cable length just long enough so you're just not having a lot of excess that could go bad because this is kind of bad for the manufacturer. <clears throat> so with that out of the way, cable management, try not to kink really sharp bends and turns. And it was really simple. Probably t five, ten minutes from setting up. It is safe and secure. You got that up. I had a second one. Reason being, leaning on that, I let it down to take the weight off. <clears throat> and it was, <coughs> pardon me, resting on that over there. Well, this side continued to come down and put in a bit of a bind and yeah, it wasn't such a good idea. I wouldn't even lift up. So I had to get my floor jack out and raise this corner right here up to take the strain off of it. And I was like, okay. Yeah, so when you bring your safety jack up, lower your trailer down so it comes up to it, but don't put a lot of weight on it. Once it's in there and it's safe, you know, use extras if you want. So at that point, here's another safety tip. You want to know if you're taking loose your down pressure or your up pressure. If you're doing your up pressure, be careful. The minute you take that off, that fluid's gonna come down. That piston's gonna collapse and push the fluid out, make a mess and crush you, or come down on your stands. Hopefully you got your stands. In my case, it was the downstroke pressure. So the weight of the bin pushing down is not affected. Put a rag in here, loosen this up, it oozed out a little bit, work quickly, feed it out to the T back here. There are two T's. One of the T's near the center frame piece is the one that goes into the lower upstrokes on both pistons and the T on the outside was for the downstroke it's a downforce so loosen that fish it through loosen the other one pop it out it's going to drip out just the you know loose fluid that's in the hose put a tarp down or something then connect the new one and as I said the new one was 10 foot that's all they had I wasn't going to wait because I got to get this back in the service tomorrow so I just kind of made a figure eight, trying to keep big kinks out, zip tied it up so it's not going to get caught in debris as you drive down the road or hung up on anything. A lot of these zip ties here were here for the manufacturer. I mean, that's that's a bit of a tight turn. I wouldn't recommend kinking them so hard like that, but that was from the manufacturer. Uh, it was really simple. Working from the underneath side, right here with just my arm under. Down there, I'm definitely not going to be in here. I actually crawled under to be even safe, safer just in case something happened. It's also a safety. Chalk your tires, and I'm also hooked up to the truck just as a safety precaution so the trailer doesn't go tip up and down. It was really easy. Once that's done, the only other thing you needed to do, remove your safety stands and your jacks, raise it up, bring it down. In my case, the downstroke, it was no fluid in there. So coming down, it's pushing the air into here. Before you do, loosen your cap a little bit so it can burp. 
that air, as soon as they hit it, not long, you know, about four inches on the movement here, the bed going down, it pushed that air into here and it was bubbling and splattering in there. It's got to get that air through the system. So we raised and lowered two, three times just to make sure it was all worked out, get it flushed. After the first cycle, the air was done. I didn't hear any more burping, but I wanted to just cycle through. Did it two or three times, and then he come over here looking for leaks. Make sure you don't have any leaks on this one or the other one I worked on down there. Once that was done, I just simply cleaned up a little bit. It's not leaking. It's been 20 minutes. I've been observing it, so I think we're good and golden because all these are, I'm sure there's different kinds. These, as they tighten on, there's a, a tapered end in there that presses in. It's just a compression fitting. And if you have debris in there or it's scarred or not tight, could leak. You don't want those blowing off or spewing fluid everywhere. So again, recap, these trailers are big and they're heavy. You don't want to be working right in this area really ever. But if you're working on them at all, period, make sure the weight is out of the trailer so they're empty and you have your safety supports and stands. And if you just chimed in, I'm not relying on just the two by four. That's just a little added backup and I had to lift up the side because I had a little issue with it down too far, put it in a bind. When your fluid is done and you burped it, keep an eye on your fluid height. It's plenty in there. I didn't lose too much. I reckon I lost maybe a pint, a quart tops over the past few days. If it is low, make sure you fill it with the appropriate fluid and you should be done. Then clean up. If you like the video, if you got any benefit out of it, you know what to do, give it one of these. Until next time, be safe. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, by the way, if you like the kind of just general maintenance and upkeep on equipment, let me know. I try to do more of this. I really contemplated doing this because I thought it might be boring, but I was like, you know what? Maybe somebody has a similar issue, doesn't know, or is unaware, just wants to jump in and tackle it. But some simple things like upstroke, downstroke. If it's the upstroke and you take that loose, it's coming down. So just think it through before you get into it and use some common sense and you can have a safe, successful repair yourself. DIY. By the way, I'm not ASE certified or whatever, but I got common sense. Until next time, be safe. We'll see you then.